Welcome to Noah's Insectopia. In this video, we're going to talk about overwintering pupa and how to collect and raise them yourselves. This is a way to enjoy the change from caterpillar to adult moth without the need to feed the hungry caterpillars. You can find overwintering pupa all over the place if you know what plants and trees to look for. I will show you our setup for overwintering the pupa, as well as show you three or four of the species we are overwintering right now. Overwintering is a term used to describe when a moth or butterfly goes dormant for the winter. This is essentially the same as hibernating in other animals and prevents the insect from being alive, so to speak, when there are no sources of food available for either the young caterpillar or the adult. First, let's talk about the setup. These are some of the cages you can purchase at various retail outlets, including Petco or PetSmart and Walmart. They are generally less than $10 and are easy to clean and come in various sizes. My first cage here is a pretty large cage that I have several different types of pupa in. I have paper towels laid out on the bottom just to help with mess a little, but other than that, they don't really serve any real function. Going up the back of each cage, however, is a piece of screen that I bought from Home Depot. You can buy small sizes of screen, but I bought a large roll because I have plans to build large cages in the future. Maybe even someday my own butterfly aviary. Anyway, the screen is just held in place by the lid and serves as a way for the newly emerged moth or butterfly to climb up the back of the cage so they can dry their wings. Without the screen, the sides could prove a little too slippery. And without being allowed to hang, the wings may not dry properly. I also keep these cages outside so the pupa may experience the temperatures of the winter months. If kept inside, they could artificially hatch too early and not have any available food source. I didn't do it with these, but something else I just learned was that it might not be a bad idea to let them get a little bit of the actual weather as well, such as the rain or snow. In my hand, in the smaller cage, I pulled out a large polyphemus cocoon. This is a relatively large cocoon formed by one of the most common members of the giant silk moth family. The caterpillars spin silk and form a loose cocoon of leaves around themselves before spinning a more secure egg-shaped silken cocoon for themselves inside the leaves. If it is the fall, they then overwinter until the spring, which in the north would probably mean March through April, but here in the south could mean anything. The easiest time to find these and other cocoons then is late in the fall or early winter when the trees have lost all of their leaves. A lot of the pupa will fall to the ground with the leaves and be buried under all of the litter, but many will have stayed up in the trees, making it easy to spot them in the now bare tree. Several of these we found as caterpillars and raised, but several we found out on a nature trail. In our larger cage here, we have some puss caterpillars. These were also found on my swamp red maple I have in the backyard and they are the most poisonous caterpillar in the United States. They are the caterpillar of the southern flannel moth and can also be called asp caterpillars. These caterpillars are super cute and if you are willing to take the chance of getting stung, are fun to raise. However, if you don't want to get stung, do like I said and gather most of them after they have pupated. They perform their pupa in the crooks of tree limbs and are masters at making themselves appear to be part of the tree. They look just like little knots of the tree. This is a puss we raised ourselves, and as you can see, it still has some of its silk around it. I'm not sure if that is because we raised it and it didn't weather the elements, but it is unlike the others in that it doesn't and that it does still have the silk around it. These pupa are most certainly dead, as they have been pupa since the end of summer, but I've kept them in the off chance that they just overwinter a really long time. These are actually the pupa of the tobacco hornworm I have in another video. And I like these because of the little hooks they make. Again, I'm assuming their super dark color means these are dead, but I will hold on to them until the spring just in case. Finally, in my overwintering cages, I have some Iomoth pupa. 
Now all of these I did raise myself as I never did see any free ones, so to speak, on my tree. These are a lot like the polyphemus moths in that they first attach some leaves to themselves with some silk before they form their pupa inside the leaves. Io moths are another form of poisonous caterpillar and I've been stung by a couple, but I don't mind it too much. The irritation is minimal, unlike the puss caterpillar from what I've read. Finally, I want to talk about my swamp red maple tree where I found most of these pupa. It's amazing that I've had this tree for only about five years and I've never noticed the caterpillars on the tree until I actually started looking for them. On a side note, since I mentioned I've only had this tree for five years, I want to mention how amazingly fast this tree grows. It was purchased to replace a large shade tree that fell during Katrina and when I brought it home, it actually fit in the back of my car. That's just a little side note to let you know how fast this tree grows and how beautiful it is. Now in this tree, you can see that there are several more polyphemus cocoons that I've not yet harvested. They are a little higher up and I've not gotten my ladder out yet to gather all of them. I did gather a few and some of them had holes in the ends of them. I'm not sure if that means they hatched or predators such as birds got to them. I also found a couple in the leaf litter on the ground. This is what I was talking about earlier in that in a bare tree, finding the cocoons is relatively easy as they most often are the only dried up leaves left in the tree. Well that concludes this video on overwintering pupa. I hope you enjoyed it and be sure to check out my other videos on raising caterpillars and hopefully once summer hits, how to raise other insects as well. Keep bug hunting!